Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Boxer Walkler, and I practice in Los Angeles. It's a real pleasure for me to highlight the Alicon Custom Cornea System. Overall, this is a normal topography. The reason that we know that is because when we look at the scale here, which shows different levels of curvature, as well as the actual corneal power, we see that the cornea itself doesn't have any areas of steepening. In particular, we're looking at the lower part of the cornea here to see if we have any relative inferior steepening, and we don't. If we do see a little inferior steepening, it just makes us a little more concerned that we need to do a little further investigation to make sure that there isn't perhaps formed frus keratoconus or actual keratoconus because that may certainly be a factor in determining if the patient is a candidate for LASIK. We first need to make registration marks on the eye, which account for cyclo rotation. And after applying a numbing drop, we pre-dry the limbal area with a Q-tip here, which helps the ink marks become very adherent. And afterwards, we use a special pen that make tiny little dots right in the limbal area of the conjunctiva. And these are the registration marks. So what I'm gonna do is now make the wavefront measurements. I want you to look right at that little blinking light. You're gonna hear some beeps. Perfect. So the automatic registration process makes this extremely efficient. In the past, we had to manually register the treatment. We do manually register the very first picture, and then after that, all the subsequent ones are done automatically. These two marks are the critical parts of the registration process, because when the patients lay down, the eyes rotate naturally but this is what we're gonna to use to make sure that it's all lined up when they lay down. After I set the initial registrations like this, and I accept it, then the subsequent registrations are already lined up for us. Why don't we take a look at the aberrations of the patient. In the left eye, we have less coma, but we do have some trefoil here as well, 0.27 microns of, of trefoil. So when we actually want to look at this on the map, it gives us an idea of where some of these aberrations are right now. And what we're going to do is go to the planning software, which is the custom cornea surgery planning mode. This is the right eye. With my nomogram adjustment, we're going to add back in. We put in the cornea thickness and our flap thickness. And now we can actually see the exact pattern that the laser is going to treat. And this is unique for each eye. This is the actual ablation profile of the patient's eye, and it's using the myopic astigmatism algorithm to generate this profile. Of note is the width of the red zone, which is the core part of the treatment. The reason why this is important to note is because there are additional pulses being placed in the ablation pattern here, which make it wider, and that's going to counteract potential induced spherical aberration. Alternatively, the myopic sphere algorithm, when you see the red zone here, has a more narrow red area, and that's reflecting less pulses in the periphery, so potentially there could be spherical aberration with the sphere algorithm. The myopic astigmatism, now you see, is wider in the red zone, places those additional pulses in the periphery to counteract potential induced spherical aberration. Now, both algorithms do have a total ablation zone of 9.0 millimeters, but the key is what is happening inside that 9 millimeter zone, and that's where the two algorithms differ and why it's much more powerful to counteract spherical aberration. After the information is uploaded into the system, the surgical plan is confirmed on the screen. We do sample tracking before making the flap, and this assures that we're going to have accurate placement you see the two registration marks here, and notice that they are not lined up with the white line, which means that there is cyclorotation in this patient. The eye tracker of the LADAR vision is unique in that it is a closed-looped eye tracker, and it scans the position of the eye 4,000 times a second, and mirrors internally adjust 100 times a second to apply the pulses accurately. Each eye has microsychotic movements, and therefore, before the actual eye moves virtually, the laser tracker is there to assure accurate pulse placement. It's the only eye tracker actually approved by the FDA that has made a difference in enhancing the surgical results. After the flap is retracted, we are now going to actually register the treatment. 
and we rotate the horizontal line, which is now oblique because of the cycle of rotation, and the two circles are lined up over those registration marks, assuring perfect placement. The flap protector is therefore put in position, which protects it from inadvertent laser pulses. You can see the 0.9 millimeter flying spot of the laser there, and after the treatment, the flap is replaced, and we quickly use micro sponges after a very, very mild irrigation to remove interface fluid. This is an important maneuver to reduce flap edema and therefore wrinkles by overhydrating the flap, which this avoids. And then we follow the vertical micro sponge movement with two horizontal ones, which removes the interface fluid. That wasn't too bad, was it? Not at all. And can you see the clock already? Can you read the time? I can, yeah. It's uh... 1225. 1225. Good. <laughs>